Hey guys, uh, welcome to another video on my channel here, Licacy. Today we have a special guest, Barry, who will be joining us to share his personal experience with hair loss. As some of you might know, um, Barry is the winner for Motion Clinic's complimentary hair transplant, and he will actually be traveling to South Korea uh, next week to get his very first hair transplant. And so with the help of Barry and Motion, um, I will be documenting his hair transplant journey uh, over the next 12 months, and I'm very hopeful and you know just really excited um, for his end results. And um, I just know that's gonna be incredible. And also for those who did not win uh, the drawing, there is going to be a future um, drawing again sometime probably next year. And so there's a good chance that this time I will be able to accompany the winner to South Korea. This time, Barry, I wasn't able to go with you due to um some um some priorities with work and family yeah, sure. yeah. but yeah and make sure to stay tuned for that and um i'll keep you guys updated once i hear back with more information for motion you know once again barry thanks again for joining me today and no, it's thank always you. to you know kind of you know see how people are actually going to look like before and um, after hair transplant and just kind of going over their personal experience just dealing with mm -hmm. hair loss and also kind of you know just seeing the transformation over the the past few months so yeah. overall, um, how are you feeling with the whole travel and, um, you know, just going to South Korea for, <laughs> it's your first time, right? You've, you've never traveled to South I've, Korea before? I've never gone that far before. I've gone to like London before years ago, but I've never, okay. yeah, not the mm -hmm. complete other side of the planet. Yeah. So, uh, Do you exciting. have any, uh, any concerns or any worries about traveling outside of Canada and you know, well, done. yeah, I guess there's always that little bit of, you know, nervousness and apprehension about it. It's, uh, it's, you know, a, another country that we've I've never been to before. And it's a, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's, it's a long travel. How many hours is it from there? Um, it's like 15, 15, 15. hours. Okay. Yeah. I'll fly to Montreal. That's like an hour and a half from mm -hmm. here. And then it's like 15 hours. From Montreal straight, so it's uh, okay. that's a little crazy for me. It'd be crazy for anybody, you know. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be worth it though. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll we'll definitely see, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely see. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm very hopeful uh -huh. and nervous. Like you know, you, you yeah. know how it is. I've done a lot of research on it as much as I possibly can on the uh, on the clinic and just the procedure itself and you know people's outcomes so i mean it's yeah. it's it's very positive i think can you tell us a little about your hair loss journey you know when you started losing hair and you know kind of like some of the things they've been doing to deal with hair loss so for me it started like really young i mean like right now it's just like i gotta you know this is yeah. a big 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 fat forehead right type of thing but i've always had that that widow's peak when mm -hmm. I was, at, you know, a very young age, like, so around 18, 19, I, I started noticing um, it thinning, right? Like, yeah, yeah. like I said, I had that widow's peak, but beyond that widow's peak, mm -hmm. it started to slowly mm -hmm. thin out. And then I started seeing more scalp and I didn't really pay much attention to it when I was younger because, yeah. you know, I was, it was quite a while ago and I didn't really do anything about it except for, you know, style my hair a certain way. Mm -hmm. and wear hats and stuff like that and not really yeah. think about it um it's only until in the last um probably seven to ten years i've been really thinking about it like i'm watching channels like your channel and other people's content and stuff like that that i've really started thinking about you know i have to get on the rogaine i have to get on finasteride and i have yeah. to start microneedling and stuff like that so i've, I've done all that and nothing really really came from it i think the finasteride just kind of slowed everything down quite a bit you know yeah. what i mean my hair but the progression of my hair loss kind of slowed down a bit so that's kind of saved it a bit and i've been using stuff like you know hair fibers and mm -hmm. stuff like that to kind of conceal the look but of course it never never really works yeah when did you start finasteride because you said you started noticing your hair thinning around 18 or 19. When oh i started yeah, pro uh, not long ago, like three, three, four years ago, I started finasteride. Okay. Yeah. And you feel like that's actually helped stabilize yeah. further? Stabilize for sure. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. I'm starting, like, even the, my crown is starting, yeah. is really starting to go a bit, right? Like, so stuff like that, which never, I never really paid attention to before, but now I'm like, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. It's starting to go back there, you know, can't have both ends go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, kind of like the thing that I wanted to mention was that I feel like a good portion of my viewers are between the ages of like 20 to 30. And that's mm-hmm. based on some of the analytics that I've seen on my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think just because, um, you know, you're a bit older than this yeah. age group of 20 and 30, sure. Uh, you, you know, in your late 40s. Yep. You know, it still kind of shows that, you know, no matter what age you are, you know, you, hair still is going to matter at the end of the day. And yeah. I've seen people like even in their like 60s and 70s getting hair transplants. Mm. And it, it's like one of those things where, you know, many people think like just because you have a girlfriend or just because you're older or that you're married and have kids that your hair is not going to matter. But that's actually not the case. No, I agree. Totally agree. Yeah, so, so like for your case, you said you've been kind of thinking about getting a hair transplant for the past like seven, 10 years. Um, a lot of yeah. people end up getting their hair transplants like in their mid twenties or even like their early thirties. Right. Was there a reason why you kind of wanted to wait until now to get a hair transplant? I think it's always been a financial thing. Okay. You know, it's always been a cost and I never, uh, you know, I thought about it here and there and I kind of dove into it and checked out yeah. prices and stuff like that. But then I just kind of like, Mm-hmm. brushed it off and I was like well I can't really afford it it's not the right time mm-hmm. and then I just forgot about it oddly enough like how can you forget about it but I did and I just kind of like just kept doing with the routine that I was doing yeah and kind of hoping that okay maybe I'll just hang on to what I got but you know it's just it's just there right and like I got a I got a big head <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> and I don't like and the last resort uh-huh. funny and funny enough you know, I didn't want I had I didn't want to shave my head. Right. Because you felt like you'd look bad. Oh, or, it's just I don't have, have the head for a shaved head, right? Yeah, so, that's yeah, that, that's very important too. You gotta have the proper head shape, otherwise even yeah. like some people look really good with like a shaved it, head. Agreed. And some people just don't have the head shape to pull off nope. that shaved head. So no. I mean so, if, if that's the case, then you gotta do something to get your hair back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like you know, this is a situation now that I'm in where I had to shave my head because of the procedure. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Yeah. I can deal with shaving my head because it's I'm going to have results, right? It's going to grow back, like you know, all of it's going to grow back, hopefully. To uh, to you know, I'm not I'm not expecting miracles here, right? Like I'm just expecting something cool to happen. That's all. Right. Yeah, and it's it's easier to maintain if you shave your head and get mm-hmm. a hair transplant versus. Yes um you know if, if you you know like like some people want to do the the non-shaven method where mm. they just kind of like leave the majority of the hair yeah and then they they're still able to kind of like you know sort out the hairs and implant it yeah but from my experience like shaving it is the way to go because like everything's just not going to be uniform if you don't shave it it's going to look mm-hmm. weird and once the transplanted hair start going in it's it's not going to look you know as good like if, right if you were to shave it, like everything would just kind of be very um, symmetrical and you won't really notice anything too much. At least once kind of like all the redness and just, you know, things like that kind of fade away. But mm-hmm. it's just easier to maintain. And especially when you're washing yeah. it after, you know, a, a couple of weeks, it's yeah. just it's just so much easier as far as maintenance, maintenance goes. So I'm kind of looking forward to, in a sense, the shave of my head. Like I don't want to do it, like I said, but I'm yeah. kind of looking forward to just just getting rid of it and starting over again. Yeah. Have you ever Seven. shaved your head before? No, no, no. no. <laughs> this is this is the first time I've had it close when I was like really young, but I've always had longer hair. OK, I played in the band for so long mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the long hair and the look kind of goes with that. Mm-hmm. So that's what I did. And and now it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's slowly just getting shorter and shorter and shorter just to kind of mm-hmm. have. But now with the whole transplant thing, it's um, there it goes. Yeah, go. I'm kind of curious, like everyone has yeah. like different answers to this, but um, just kind of like going through hair loss, what were your, some of like your number one or some of your main, I guess, obstacles or issues that you've had just because of, you know, the fact that you're receding your hair? Mm-hmm. Like in my case, like it was more so of if I were, you know, at the swimming pool, like I would never get my hair wet just because mm. 
yeah. that exposed the thinness and, you know, just the big forehead yeah. or, you know, just kind of like going against, like if, if the wind were blowing against your hair, you know, just everything, yeah. would, you know, be exposed, you mm-hmm. know, just kind of like minor things like that. Just, uh, I'm just kind of curious because everyone has like different, different things and different. Um, it's kind of that. It's almost exactly that. I mean, like if, if it's, and we we're on the other, you know, the East coast of Canada, wind is kind of the thing right so it's um i've always walked backwards <laughs> in wind <laughs> yeah. Again, <laughs> just yeah. to avoid anything uh-huh. anything from happening but stuff like that you're absolutely right like stuff like wind mm-hmm. like getting wet going on vacation or getting to the pool or whatever it was always like you know, yeah you know you always try to keep your head above water just just foolish stuff that people that men with full heads of hair don't even think about right right they're just like doesn't even cross their mind at all. They don't have, doesn't have to cross their mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. But guys they, who were self-conscious about it, they really, you know, hold on to that. Yeah. They don't know the struggle, right. especially if they're blessed with good genes of keeping their hairs and, you know, a lot of the things that we have to go through just to like, especially also with like when you're getting like photos taken or something like that, you know, if, if it's taken oh. under direct sunlight or harsh light and, you yeah. know, it's, 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 it's never a good thing. Or family oh. pictures outside. It's like, really? Do we have to do it outside? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> moving forward with the hair transplant, do you have any expectations? Um, any in terms of like hairline design and density? Like, is there anything that you're looking forward to or want to achieve? Um, it's just simple. A, a hairline, like a, a lowered hairline, is is what I want. It does, I don't, I'm not asking for, you know, miracles. I don't want none of that stuff like where some guys right. go, oh, my God, <laughs> some guys go so low. It just looks like a hockey helmet, you know. It's just yeah, foolishness. Yeah. I don't want that. I'm, I'm not expecting any of that stuff. I, do, I would just, like, have a normal-looking, natural-looking hairline for the size of my head. And that's that. I mean, 3,000 graphs, according yeah. to Kim, is a lot, right? So and They also went over, like, hairline design and everything like that, and... Yeah, I mean, like he said, he'll get he'll get a better idea once once I'm there. Yeah, it's hard to do it when you're you know speaking over email or he sees like a just a random picture that we sent them and stuff like that. Yeah, um, he'll get a better idea once he once he mm-hmm. sees me in person. So yeah, um, well, at this point, like the way it is now, is anything is great. Yeah, anything. Right? <laughs> so yeah. I'll be I'll be I'm sure I'll be quite happy with you know uh-huh. something at all. Yeah. What was your uh? overall impression with motion clinic and you know just kind of being able to communicate with them did you have any issues or uh, any any difficulties or anything like that no kim kim was is brilliant like i really have to put him up on a bit of a pedestal because his communication for you know a place that's 12 hours apart from me Mm -hmm. uh his communication is around the clock it seems I mean, he was great and he was very forward and, you know, this is what we're doing. And, you know, he gave me all kinds of um, tips to follow, all kinds of, um, you know, ideas of what hotels to choose from, um, like uh, locations, ge- geographical mm-hmm. movements through the city and stuff like that. And it was just really great. Everything was really broken down yeah. perfectly. Right. So uh, how long are you staying in Korea? I'm there for. Uh, a week. A week, okay. Yeah, that's so it. That, that's, 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 yeah, just with like, all the scheduling and stuff like that, that's how like it really uh, really muster up. So it's Saturday to, well, I'll arrive Sunday, there Sunday, okay. mm-hmm. and I fly back Saturday to there Saturday. Yeah, so at least you're going to have some time to kind of tour around the city and get yeah. some green food and, you know, do some sightseeing. I get- yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I guess I can ask you that. Like, you've been there, you've 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 had your procedure there and stuff like that. Is is it okay to do that after a procedure? Or like, is it? Do they recommend, you know, going around and walking around and seeing? Yeah, some of the yeah. I mean, it it, kinda, it 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 depends on each person because you know their their mm-hmm. healing rates. Um, you know, it, it depends from person to person. But you kind of want to take it easy on the first day just because yeah, you basically had surgery. Yeah. And some people swell. Um, you don't want to. You you want to stay away from like strenuous exercising or walking. For too sure. Much. 
So at least for like the first day, uh, you know, the first day or two, I would just kind of rest, just kind of take things easy. But, you know, after that, you see people just kind of walking around with, you know, band-aids. That's what that's what I did. Like after the first day, yeah. um, I had this band-aid around my head, which is kind of a little bit embarrassing just because, you know, you're kind of it was like, hey, you know, I've, 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 had, I've had a hair transplant, you know, <laughs> but I, I was totally fine. Like I didn't have any swelling, anything like that. I was yeah. totally OK. Um, mm-hmm. It's just the aftercare, like after mm-hmm. like the first five or six days, because you don't want to yeah. dislodge any of the grafts and you don't want to bump your head or do anything to yeah. potentially, you know, knock out the grafts that were implanted. So um, as long as you're careful, you know, you shouldn't yeah. have any issues. And even with like that's, flying after, it's it's not. That's, yeah, that's what Gus was going to ask you, too. I mean, like that's probably, you know, the most nerve wracking for me is after the procedure and getting on a plane. And then having the layovers and the connections and stuff like that. That's kind yeah. of what I'm freaked out about is, you know, people putting up your overhead baggage and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. I would recommend you get one of those, um, you know, those travel pillows that, that you. Or the uh, neck pillows. Yeah, the neck pillows. Yeah. 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 Get one of those and then it's going to help yeah. out as far as like elevating your, your head. Sure. And then also kind of getting that pressure away from the recipient mm. and also from the, um, the donor area. Right. Um, the donor area, you don't have to worry about too much because no. it's so pretty quickly. It's just the recipient area that you want to be very careful because after about a week or so, it's it's going to scab up and, you know, you're, you're yeah. even if you like, were to like touch it or anything like that, nothing's going to happen. It's just whatever's being implanted, you want to make sure that it's there permanently and you don't, you know, you yeah. don't knock out any of the grafts. But yeah. after like four or five days, you should be fine. And it's, yeah, he said like the fifth day you're, you're uh, pretty much anchored in and should be. You yeah. Know, okay. You got to be just very, very careful what you're doing. Yeah. I, I think three days is when it's like fully anchored based on oh. studies. But, okay. you know, you, you can never be too safe and just kind of, you know. Yeah. But I mean, you're there for a week. So if you were to come into any issues or if you had any questions, you know, you're probably just, you know, a few blocks away from going back to the clinic and getting yeah. what they need. So yeah, yeah, it's I mean, good that you're staying there for a full week. Um, some people only stay there for like, I, I think the minimum is like three days because you got to wash your hair after the first day. Yeah. Um. So, but I mean, a week, you know, you're going to have enough time to heal. You're going to yeah. be there. And if you have any questions, you're just, you know, a drive away or even just, you know, a few, few walks. Yeah. Away. It's just, it's just like, it's walkable. It's just down the same yeah. avenue. It's just, you know, straight down. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah. it was great. If you have any uh, words of advice for people who are considering getting a hair transplant, yeah. Um, anything that you might find helpful, if you, you know, would mind sharing. And I, I think it'd be helpful for those who are really kind of contemplating getting a hair transplant. I, I think one of the fears is just kind of pulling that trigger and yeah. get, getting the ball rolling. And, you know, if, if there's anything that you might be able to, um, you know, portray to them to kind of help them, you know, get the ball rolling, then, you know, that'd be awesome. I mean, I would, if, if, you, ha- if you have the means to do it, you know, if you have the time, if you have the money to do it and it's, you know, it's really weighing on your mind that much and it's really affecting your quality of life yeah. and what you do on a day to day basis, um, you should consider it, you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, I mean, from, from my research and stuff like that, it's not a good idea to do it too young because okay. it's your, you know, if you do it too young, then you know that you're going to go bald and you still have somewhat of a good head of hair. And if you, you know, if you do too young, then you're going to lose more hair as it progresses, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, you know, like you said, you deal with guys that are in their 30s. That's probably a good a good age point, right, to consider something like that. Yeah, it, it's always better to, you know, f- you know, stabilize your hair loss and then yeah. get hair transplant later down the road. Yeah. As opposed to getting one early and then still yeah. you know, experiencing further progression of hair loss. Because at that point, you're going to be end up you know, playing a game of continuous, you know, just catching up. Absolutely. Um, but do you think your quality of life would have changed had you gotten a hair transplant earlier as far as, um, you know, like, let's say like in your early thirties versus, versus now? Probably. It probably would have changed. Yeah, I think so. I think my, uh, it would have definitely boosted my confidence level. Yeah. Right. It, it does. I mean, it does that. You know, just it's yeah. simple. It is, and I know it's, it sounds like a, you know, it is a cosmetic thing, but I mean, it's something that's important to people, right? Like it's their, it's how you look, it's how you perceive yourself. Um, and when you know you have a part of your look that's 
that you don't like it you know it brings you down and, and it's it's kind of you know melts away your your confidence a bit so yeah you know if yeah if i was 32 and this kind of presented itself sure mm-hmm. definitely would you know yeah, yeah especially you know if i had the information that i what i know now mm-hmm. like you know i'm after researching quite a bit of it and i kind of know okay this is what i need to do in order to take care of it and prolong it and i, I do mm-hmm. have to stay on these other types of medication to keep it going right i just can't get a hair transplant and, and that's it there's right. other, there's mm-hmm. things that you have to do to keep it all together right so now i know that so i mean yeah it, you know 30 i would have got a dump but i'm i'm glad i'm doing it now because i know a lot more about it mm-hmm. you know do you plan on using anything in addition to finasteride after the hair transplant or are you just planning on just sticking with with finasteride i'll use rogaine i'll, rogaine? I'll go okay. back on yeah i'll go back on rogaine for sure and uh, I'll probably reintroduce um, uh, microneedling mm-hmm. just to see just to see what happens, right? I mean, if nothing, if I don't see much of a difference, I'll probably drop that. But I will just go into it and just to see, right? Yeah, it, you know, it, it never hurts. And uh, no, you know, the, the only thing is, at least you've tried, and you know that it's either going to work or not work. And yeah, you know, I think one of the the most important things is to at least just be on a minimum of, you know a five alpha reductase inhibitor like finasteride or even dutasteride and mm. after like in your case like once you get a hair transplant and if, if you've been able to stabilize it then you're, you're pretty much good to go you know yeah unless you wanted to you know add in more density or you wanted to kind of lower down your hairline or or things like that but if yeah. you're able to stabilize your hair loss and you get a hair transplant and you have a good hairline and you're content yeah. with the density that you have then yeah it's, it's gonna for the most part, be with you for for a lifetime. So yeah, as long as you you know keep it healthy, and yeah, yeah watch right. What you're right. doing type of thing, right? Um, and it, you know, it depends on what their design is going to be. Once mm-hmm. I see them, I mean, I could be completely happy with it, and gotta be that, you know. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. But you know, one of the good things is that you know, motion is, um, at least in my personal experience, they're one of mm-hmm. the hair transplant clinics in South Korea. Mm. And, you know, I'm, I'm fairly confident that you're going to be in good hands. And I can only speak for motion because I've actually had two hair transplants from them. But you had and, both of them there. Okay. Yeah, I got both of them done. Yeah. And, awesome. You know, even to this day, like, I just wake up and I'm like, you know, I, I look in the mirror and I'm like, you know, I'm so grateful that, you know, there's no more like receding, you know, I don't, I don't have a receding hairline and there's not yeah. much that I need to do other than get a decent haircut and then just putting yeah. on some this style. So yeah, I'm um, just very thankful for Motion Clinic and their staff. Absolutely. And, you know, at the same time, I'm super excited for looking forward to your results and yeah, me too. Kinda seeing how your hair transplant journey is going to be for the next 12 months. And, um, you know, I'll definitely be following up with you, um, sharing your results. Hopefully we can do like, you know, like yeah. one month stop or three months and six sure. months and so on and so forth. Absolutely. And I can tell you that, you know, it's, it's definitely going to be a life changer for you. Mm-hmm. And you're going to feel the same. Best of luck. Best thanks, of man. luck. And Thank you. Thanks for, th- thanks for putting it all together, too. That w- it, it took me by surprise. Yeah, yeah, no worries, man. You you're, know, it's you're, really you're, great that you're, that you're doing this for, for yeah, guys, right? And, also very, uh, you know, just accommodating. And, uh, for sure. You know, there, there are people that are more difficult to deal with and just more picky with everything. And, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So um, no, there's no point to I, be like that, you know. It's just trying, right. you know, life yeah. is uh is too short. It's nice to keep it, you know, simple yeah. and work together, right? So it makes it everything yeah. very yeah. simple. Exactly, and you know, I really hope that I was able to that I would have been able to travel with you. Mm. Um, but you know, definitely I'll keep you posted, and we'll definitely be in touch. Sure. And um, I'll keep you guys, you know, keep everyone posted on on your journey. Once again, Barry, uh, safe travels to you to Thanks, uh, Korea. Yeah. Thank and, you. Uh, if you need anything, just reach out to me. Yeah, yeah I'll keep you posted. Definitely. I'll keep yeah, you I'll posted along that. the way. Um, but yeah, man, best of luck, and uh, okay. we'll be in touch. Okay, man. All right. Okay. Thank you, Barry. Take, take care. Take care. All, All right. right.